What about voting? Does that help? It don't help, right? Read. And I only ask because I want to get some, I want to meet where you at and then we can build from there, right? Read. This is the book of 2 Timothy, uh -huh. chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. All scripture uh -huh. is given by inspiration uh -huh. of God. Uh, come on. And it's profitable. Is what? Profitable. So you ask where do we go from here? You want to see your people be profitable, right? Come on. For doctrine. For doctrine. For reproof. Uh huh. For correction. What is reproof? Is correction. So we need to be corrected. Do you agree that the so-called black man needs a, a lot of correction here in America? Right? Come on. For instruction. For instruction. Now another word for instruction would be the laws of the Most High God. So we got we teach our people how to stay from cigarette smoke. Right? You don't smoke, do you? I mean anything. You, do you put any fire in your lungs? Whether it be blunts, whether it be, I mean, we, we're your brothers. We ain't going to turn you in and call the police or nothing like that. I do. Yeah, don't worry. You smoke, right? Now, you know, you understand that smoking is bad for your body, right? It's bad for your health. Yeah. The, it, it tells you on the pack, will cause cancer. Right. But our people don't, they don't, they smoke it anyway. But the Bible says don't smoke. The Bible says don't defile the temple, right? So we talk about instructions. Instructions are going to help our people actually be prosperous. We just told you, right? You talking about the actions from our side or from your side? Because we're doing the action right now. We're teaching instruction. We're teaching how to correct our people, how to reproof our people. But it's, it's up to our people to actually hearken to that and be obedient to the Most High God. How do we appeal to people? How do you make it count? Right. Right, give me my sheep hearing my voice, right? The Bible says, my sheep hearing my voice. So some people aren't going to get it. And and that, look, look, hopefully we just sow a seed today. And then, you know, if we still here tomorrow or a month from now, somebody could come by and water that and get the increase. Everybody's not going to get it. The Bible says everybody's not going to get it, right? Read what you got. This is the book of First Kings, chapter 8, verse 46. Yeah, if Google, they Google. sin against Thee, if they what? If they sin against thee. So let me ask you something, brother. What is sin? sin? What is sin? sin is not the so would smoking be a sin? Yeah. Right. So if they what? If they what? If they sin against thee, uh -huh. for there is no man that sinneth not. Come on. And thou be angry with them. Come on. Hey. The most high is angry with me in sin. Right? That's why we're at the bottom. Let me tell y'all something. This book is only for a certain group of people. It's for the Israelites. It's not for everybody. That's why everybody can do wickedly and be prosperous using this book. And then people like us, we actually become at the bottom because of religion. This is not a religious book. It's a book of culture. This is the King James Bible. Can you see the Apocrypha? I mean, we got it here. We got it here. Like, what you want to see? It? Like, if it's... What, go ahead, brother. Why, why do you because that's the that's actually the authoritative text in English, what right? Was, what was the original language of that, that? You had Hebrew and then you had Greek, right? Can you read Hebrew? We, we, we can come out here and read Hebrew, but nobody would get it. So we have to go back to the text that was actually trans, transliterated from Hebrew and Greek over to the English. So you can read it in Hebrew. If if you give me a if, look, some some I'm still learning the Hebrew. I must be honest with you, right? Still learning the Hebrew. But if you give me a uh, um. It, it, allow me to give me time. I can read it in Hebrew. Yes. Now, I got a question, right? Hold on, hold on. One, one at a time. One at a time. Yeah. Yeah. We go back to the ancient manuscripts. But, you got the King James version. but that's not all we have, brother. We have ancient manuscripts as well. So we can go back to a, a, a Greek Septuagint. We can go back to a Masoretic text. We can go back to certain translations of different Hebrew, right? Like what? Like, you ever heard of the Council of Nicaea? What about the Council? What happened during the Council of Nicaea? Sir, 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 nah, brother. The Council of Nicaea was about the divinity of Christ. So people don't understand. They think the Council of Nicaea was about taking books out. It was actually about Christ's divinity. Was Christ going to be God's actual son? Or was he going to be a human? They was all going through that. So what do you believe? Do you believe he's the son of God? He's the son of God. We're all the son of God. He had an earthly father, right? We don't believe in no virgin birth. We were just going through that with a brother named Daryl. 
we don't believe in religion, right? We believe in the book. The book says he had an earthly father. He has a lineage that we, they read about in Matthew, uh, the first chapter. Joseph. Okay. That's how he's the tribe of Judah. So you don't believe in the Conception? No. No. The Bible don't teach the Immaculate Conception. That's Catholicism. The Catholic doctrine, right, that was, they, they came in and they, we were just going to that before you came in. It's a doctrine of Nicolaitans. They took Babylonian customs, right, and polytheism and put it in with this Bible and made a religion called Christianity. We don't, we're not Christianity. We're Hebrew Israelites. So do you believe in the Son, the Father, and the Holy Ghost? No. Okay. The Bible don't teach that. Okay. Right? There's a hierarchy. It's the Most High God. Give me, um, uh, give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. We're going to prove it. We're not just going to say it, we're going to prove it, right? The Bible tells you that there's no, there's no trinity, right? Christ says, I do the will of my Father. Give me John 6 and 38. Come. The Bible, look, if you read the Bible and study the Hebrew, study the Greek, it makes more sense. You can't have these, these guys here in these buildings try to tell you about this Bible because they have no idea what's going on. He's a mortal man, right? He's the son of God, yes. We're the son of God. Yes, you can. How can you how can you not be both? How can I not be the son of God? Give me Exodus. Let's do one thing at a time. We're gonna table that. Give me Exodus 4 and 22, but read what you got too though. Because you asked him, you asked a couple questions. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Come on. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Every head, the head of every man is Christ, read. And the head of the woman is the man. Do you agree with that? As a man, you're the leader? You're the head? Is she is your wife equal to you or is she a supportive member? You have authority in your household? Yeah. Okay, so you're the head, you're the leader, you're the decision maker, right? Okay, cool. And the head of Christ is God. The head of what? The head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is God. God has a head. He has someone that's over him. Read what you got in John 6. 38. God. This is the book of John chapter 6 verse 38. Come on. For I came down from heaven uh -huh. not to do my own will. So Christ said I came not to do my own will but but the will of him that sent me. So who sent Christ? He didn't send himself, right? So that's how we don't agree with no trinity. Because trinity means they're all eternal, all equal, right? And they're all one, but they're three different people. So who sent us? The Most High. So are we equal to Jesus? No. Why not? Read it again. First Corinthians 11 and 3. I'm going to show you again. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So are you, you're answering your question, are we equal to Christ? Read it again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So Christ is our head. There's, a, there's actually hierarchy. You have the most high God, you got Christ, you have man, and then you have the woman. Make sense? He's over us, yes. Well, he's in the he's in the father's realm right now. So he's not walking the earth, but he was on this earth walking around doing miracles and and casting out devils and doing his works. What about other prophets that did miracles? What about they did miracles as well? So are they on the same tier as Christ or not? Read it again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is of, Christ. Of some men. Every man is Christ. Every man is Christ. The head of every man is Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, right? No, the Bible don't say that. Give me Matthew 15, 24. He tells you who he died for. Yeah, read, read what you got. This is the book of John, chapter 5, verse 30. Come on. I came of my own self uh -huh. to do nothing. As I hear, I judge. Come on. Hey, the judgment is just because I seek not my own will. See, that's, again, Christ is saying, I seek not my own will, right? What? But the will of the Father which has sent me. So that shows you right there that Christ has an actual authority he answers to. God. God, that's right. Read what you got. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. Come on. But he answered and said, I am not sent. So Christ said, I am not sent. 
But until the lost sheep uh -huh. of the house of Israel. Of the house of everybody. Of the, the house, house of, of Israel. Israel. The house of mankind. The, the house, house of Israel. Israel. The house of Israel. That's these 12 tribes right here. No, brother, are you a Jew? I'm an Israelite. What does a Jew mean? You didn't got yoked up, man. Right? Did I answer your question? He said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So to answer your question, Christ did not die for humanity. He died for the Israelites. The so-called black, Hispanic, Native American man, woman, and child. God's chosen people. This is not a religion. You call it a religion. What does religion mean? This is a culture. It's a heritage. So we ask you, what's your nationality? Now, we didn't ask what's your religion. We asked your nationality, right? We don't deal with religion. What does religion mean? No, it's not what religion. Religion means to bind or to, or, to, or to seal, right? That's what religion means. So to have in bondage. That's, uh, look it up, look it up. Look up religion, right? It means to seal or to bind, right? It don't mean what you do every day. You can do things religiously. I brush my teeth religiously, but that's a word, that's a play on words. That's not, that's, that's something that we just say, right? I'm, I, I, I watch ball religiously, right? That's not a real thing. Right? Religion actually means to bind, to control. Because that's actually a, that's, that's, that's a word play. That's word, you, know, you know what word play is, right? That's word play. Yeah, that's all it means. Come on, bring it out. Huh. Definition of religion. The belief in and worship in a superhuman Come on. controlling power. Come on, controlling power, read. Especially a personal god or gods, uh -huh. lowercase. Come on. Uh, a particular system a what a particular system so that's actually the real definition because when you go into the first definition on google it gives you a modern definition but the real definition of, of etymology goes back to like later on when you read deeper in the definition it gives you the truth of the definition it says a system right we have been systematically oppressed have we not right so you can say that America would be a religion because it's a system of bondage. Wow. Read. Huh. A particular system of faith and worship. Uh huh. Plural. Now, religions. Uh huh. Religions, read. The world's great religion. You see that? So, I, ideally, that's a religious building right here. They don't teach any culture in that building. That's a church. They teach religion. They teach. Uh, 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 something called, we were just going into a doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which is a, Nick, a guy named Nicholas, right? He started combining religions and putting it in his Bible or, or trying to use the Bible to combine religions, right? What's your question, brother? All right, so this is all good, man. All praises, all praises. What's, what's so good about it? So we have, we have black men standing, we're speaking, we're speaking the, uh, the word of God. Uh huh. Okay. What do you mean go to war? Like talking about man up with guns and bullets? Who are we going to war against? So so wait, let me ask you a question, right? You said we're gonna go to war. Do we go to war before Christ comes or after Christ comes? Right, so we gotta wait till Christ. We gotta wait for the most high. We can't listen. We've been trying to go to war since they had us in slavery. Where has it gotten us? You ever heard of the Black Panthers? Did you hear of the Black Panthers? That wasn't a war? They waged war on us and did we defend ourselves? How many how, do you have any let me ask you a question, brother? Do you have access to nuclear weapons? Yeah. So how can we beat this beast called America with no nuclear weapons? Do you have any grenades? No. Do you have a military structure right now? Yeah, no, right? So how can we beat? We can't beat the National Guard. We can't beat the police department. Says says uh, s says history. History says that we tried it. You heard it. Hold on, hold on. You heard of you heard of Fred Hampton, right? What happened to Fred Hampton? Who killed him? Well, how? He had an in they had an infiltration, right? Something called infiltration. They had a snake come in there, right? And he actually told all their whereabouts. That happened in the sixties. That was in the 60s. 
Yeah, I mean, you want to call this year, but 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 what what military movement can a black man put together that can win right now? Can you do that? Can you put a military movement together right now and have black people co cohabitate and cooperate with each other? You can. And you will be successful. Brother, you're not going to be able to be, defeat the Proud Boys. Because you don't have any structure. That's what we're saying. This is, But we're not out here uh, talking about we're going to kill people, brother. We get it by being obedient. You don't think we're going to be obedient to get it? Obedience is not, see, it's the problem right here. If you were the leader of my army and you said obedience is not going to get us there, I would leave right away. Because you're going to have chaos in your, right, but you said obedience and you said no. The action is for us to wait on the most high. We're going to wait. Give me, give me Deuteronomy, you got something? You got something? Give me Deuteronomy 1 and 45, right? What you got? This is book of Isaiah. Hold on, hold on. This is book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Come on. But then that wait but slack it. But they that wait. They that upon, what? They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord, read. Shall renew their strength. Renew our strength, man. We got to wait. We got to be obedient to the Most High and wait. Hold on, hold on. You That went right past your head. What did it say? What did, what did it say? You heard it. What did it say? You didn't hear it. You said wait. It said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. Okay. What do you mean? We find God. I'm not going to find God to go to war with the so-called white man. No, I'm not going to let that either. We defend ourselves, but I'm not going to go on an offensive attack and get in wedge formations and go and try to take out the police department. That's suicide. Yeah. Has it ever worked? Look at that. You tell me it worked. It never worked, brother. It just said wait and be obedient. There's something called the day of the Lord's sacrifice. That's when Yahweh Shai comes back and he's going to put the power on us to be powerful men. Right? Give me Deuteronomy 28, 68. We're going to get there. But the Bible says no man was going to redeem us. Not your organization, not the NFAC, not the damn Black Panthers, not the damn Marcus Garvey movement, not no new wild. None of that is going to help us, brother. The Bible said no man was going to redeem us. Read it what you got. There's a book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. We don't have any structure, right? We don't have any order, right? Read what you got. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. Come on. By the way whereof I spake of thee. Now how did we get here to America as black men? What what mode of transportation did we take to get here? You never seen a ship? You, have you ever been to the Black History Museum in Washington, D.C.? Did you see any slave ships in there? You didn't see, you didn't see the records of the slave ships? You sure you've been there? They got records, brother, of slave ships and, and the slaves on it. I wasn't in 1619. I wasn't around. We got we have artifacts. It's called documentation. That's an artifact. Read, brother. Thou shalt see it no more again. Uh huh. And thou ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Let's read that last part again. And no man shall buy you. And that man, that word buy in the Hebrew was redeem. So no man was going to redeem us. No other people was going to redeem us. You putting yourself in a... Nobody's going to redeem us. The word in Hebrew, buy, means redeem. No other person was going to redeem us. No other man. So look, my I, what I'm trying to convey to you is any type of startup movement with no real action or no real organization is going to fail. We've seen it in history. You're not going to take America over with a group of black men. You know why? Because black men hate other black men. We don't have the organization to even do that. Uh -huh. Give me Isaiah 52 and 6. You're not helping me understand how, how the revolution begins. How the, revo the revolution begins. The revolution starts with our obedience first. Right? It starts with your obedience first. You can't go out on some Geronimo Rambo stuff and think you're going to take the world over on your own. Yeah, 
Yeah, I agree with that, but it's not our time. You ever heard timing is not time is of the essence? That's right. But we don't know the time. We do. Well, we know we don't know the time, but we know when we know when Yeshua Shai comes back, we're going to have that power. I'm not waiting on no man to tell me to go and, and put my life on the line because he said so. It starts with obedience, brother. Right, I'm ready to die for this truth. And who turned on Malcolm? His own people. Right, so your idea of having some kind of uh, group, people, there are people, there's snakes in the group that kill each other. Do you, hold on, do you understand Malcolm X died because his own people killed him? Do you understand Malcolm X was a Muslim? Yeah. So he wasn't Put the religion to the side. Hold on, hold on. Okay. But you understand that Malcolm was a Muslim, right? Yeah. From the teaching that Muslim is the right way to go, right? Right, I understand that. Now we have spirituality. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right? So everything fails because they don't follow the law. Right. No, brother, because the Bible, the Bible, the Bible tells us when we get our redemption, it's going to be through Yahweh Shai. No, 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 you're not listening. Okay. And and we listen to the Most High. He says you're going to get. We're different because we wait on the Lord. We wait on the Most High. You trying to have us go out there and and, and fight now because we got God on our side. Yes, blood will be shed. Give me Isaiah 61. I mean 63. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. But you know Isaiah 63 is a future prophecy, right? Hold on, brother. Hold on. You got to learn this eschatology, right? 63. Give me Isaiah 63. This hasn't happened yet, right? Read what you got. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 52, verse 6. Come on. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he uh -huh. that doeth speak. Behold, it uh, is I. That's not what I want. Hold on. I want um, 56 and 2. Uh, 56. Give me, um, you say that again, brother? I don't understand how Muslims are willing to die by what they believe in. And they, and they, and I. You talking about suicide? Yeah, by suicide. Yeah. Suicide and no, I'm talking about when they blow. You talking about when they blow buildings up? And we're prepared to die for what we believe in. Are you? You see, that's why would I follow you? You're not willing to die, but why would I? Why would I even take heed to your idea? Your idea. Listen, listen, listen. Your idea will say you go out there and fight, and I'm gonna sit in the back because I'm not ready to die. You're going to pump these guys up and send them out the war while you sit because you're not ready to die. All these brothers up here is willing to die. And I'll die for all these brothers because we've been obedient. Right? Your idea doesn't make sense. You were sending brothers out that look like you to go get shredded up by the so-called race wars. Right? Well, you, but you wouldn't die right now for your cause. You said a race war is coming. Did you not? Did you not? Yeah. That's what I want. Hold on. Get that. Get that in Isaiah 56. I mean Isaiah 60. Uh, from the top. This the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse one. Come on. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? 52 again. Who is this that cometh from Edom? So you got to understand who Edom is. You know who Edom is. Edom is the so-called, what you would call the so-called white man today. The guys that make the Edomite, right? They make the laws, they make the statutes, they make these, these, all these type of laws that afflict our people and condemn our people today. You agree with that? Okay, cool. So who is this that come from who? Edom. From Edom, read. With dyed garments. With dyed garments. From Basra. From Basra. You know what Basra is? That would be in the so-called land of Edom, right? Read. This. That is glorious uh -huh. in his apparel. Come on. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. Come on. I, I that speak in righteousness. Uh huh. Mighty to save. Mighty to save. Why is he saving the people? Because we've been afflicted. 
We've been tormented, right? We've been on these posters right here getting killed every 28 hours, right? Wherefore, are thy red and thy apparel? So why is Christ's uh, garments in red? Read. And thy garments like him that treaded in the wine fat. In the wine fat. You know how they made wine back in the day? They stepped on grapes, right? Come on. I have trodden the wine press alone. Come on. And of the people there was none with me. Come on. For I would tread them in my anger. And it was what? In my anger. This is why we got to wait on Yahweh Shai. Right? We got to wait on the Messiah to come back because he's going to do all these things by himself. Read on. And trample them in my fury. In his fury, read. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. So that's the red garments. That's why his garments are red because he's going to kill Edomites and he's going to have a garment drenched in red from the blood. Like you said, bloodshed. So bloodshed will happen, but this hasn't happened yet. He was, a, hold on brother, you're, you're, you're jumping from place to place. Are we answering your question right here? You said bloodshed, right? Not at all. This isn't a revelation. It don't matter brother, it's in Isaiah 56, it's in Isaiah 63. Do you know, do you know, what do you want in Revelation? What chapter verse? Yeah, what chapter? We just read an end time prophecy right here. You want revelation because you just understand revelation is a book of end times. But Isaiah 63 is an end time chapter. We're in the end times. That's why we read Isaiah 63. No, no, because to answer your question, you said bloodshed. I had to go to Isaiah 63 to answer your question. Now, what chapter in Revelation do you want? Chapter 12, okay. What are you looking for? I want to know. You're never going to find, and I want to get back to this Deuteronomy 1 and 45. I want to know when things change. So, what is the benefit? And what's the difference, honestly? Because right now, it's, it's, if I don't go back and study it, you can tell me the thing. It's like the basis. Right, that's right. So, it's like you have. I want to watch more. It's like you have. You and don't 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 just take our word for it. No, no, go I, back and study. I, yeah, we, all, I, we I, encourage I, our brothers to study. study. Right. But what I'm saying is, I want to know what's the difference between what we're doing and what they're doing. What do you mean, we? You're not on this side yet, brother. What are we doing versus what you're doing? Okay. Who was of oh, the church? Okay, gotcha. So what you're saying in that book is, is giving you the evidence that you need to prove your point. Just like when they go in the same book, they have evidence in that book. They book but they, book don't they don't prove a thing in that church, though. Don't think so? No. They teach a uh, they teach a virgin birth. They teach lawlessness or antinomianism. They teach that Christ died for all nations. We just showed you right here where Christ said he died for the children of Israel. So when you say what's the difference, our difference is we actually read the scriptures and make sense of it. They just read and pass the play around. Okay. They're getting slaughtered. Why are they getting slaughtered? That's what we're talking about. We're teaching obedience, brother. They don't teach obedience. They don't. They see the, they say the laws are done. Does the church say the laws are done away with? Okay, so what's obedience? Measured by what do you measure your obedience by? The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. No, what measure of what standard of measurement do you measure obedience by? You're not answering my question. I don't think you're getting the question. What standard do we measure obedience by? What rubric? It's called. It starts with an L. Three the law, right? They don't teach the law, so they don't teach obedience. They don't because they break the Sabbath. Right. The pastor is sleeping with the little with the with the women in the church committing That's adultery. Right.
they don't teach. When's the Sabbath day? It's on Saturday. When do they call the Sabbath day? Okay, who, who made that change? He's right here. He's right here. Constantine. Right? The Bluetooth device is really too pale. It's not the same. We're telling you the action is to be obedience. Give me first John 15 of uh, uh first John chapter um three verse fifteen. Or uh eight I want that uh tongue in action or in deed. First John three. First John three, right? And read what you got. Give me that fifty two and uh eight. Isaiah fifty two and eight. This book of Isaiah chapter fifty two, verse eight. Come on. Thy watchman shall lift up the voice. So we're the watchman, right? Because the watchman sees danger coming, and then we actually build so far and tell people, hey, enemy is coming, right? We build so far, we give the warning. That's why we're out here on the streets, because our people need a watchman. Our people need instruction. They need a warning, right? Read. With the voice together shall they sing. And we teach together. You got brothers on this corner. We got brothers up there, up there by the bus stop. And we got brothers all over Raleigh, right? Read. For they shall see eye to eye. So now we're going to see eye to eye, but when? When the Lord shall bring again Zion. When, when we get our kingdom back, now we're going to see eye to eye on things. Now we can be connected on things. Well, tell her to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Uh -huh. And that the Most High killed her baby. You don't believe in that? Do you know God? Do you know God? Yeah. Give me um. Give me yeah. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32, 39. You know God kills people, right? You you're aware of that, right? Yeah. We love this. We do this every Saturday. We teach our people rebe uh, re rebellion is a sin and to be obedient to the Most High. We tell our we tell our young men if you have a right to get a firearm, get a firearm. But we're not going to tell our people to go out there and try to start knocking off police officers, man. Right. So we tell our we tell our people to actually be obedient to the Most High. It is respected. Our movement is not respected by you. It's not respected, but they respect it. He respects it. He respects it. He respects it. She respects it. He respects it. And you got brothers that respect this movement and they don't even believe in it. I respect it. Why? Because these niggas could be out here selling drugs all damn day. Right? So well, I don't want to be respected. You know who's respected? The rappers, the gangbangers, the, the people that actually do evil, they're respected. If that's respect, I don't want it. Right? Because I don't want that type of respect. I'd rather have the love of my own people. Right? Read what you got. We do got love for my own people. We don't have everybody. Look, the Bible don't say everybody gonna get it. The Bible says everybody. Look, no, no, no. That's that's a lie. Because on Greenwood Avenue, we got guys that walk by that got love for us. Cause we teaching this Bible. They might not be obedient yet, but they got love for us because of what we doing and what we teaching. It's a positive message. The rap music is a negative message. Do you agree with that? That rap music and and black culture today is negative. The music and so-called black culture is negative. Rap music, the movies. What was the last positive black movie that was out? What happened to the Cosby shows, right? Why is the Cosby show off, but damn two and a half men still on? Bring it out! It, it, what do you mean it don't matter? It, no. You don't think you don't think a, a brother raising his family up and being home is of God? Cliff Huxtable wasn't it's but it's a movie. I'm talking about I'm talking about it's entertainment. I understand that. But what I'm saying is they took shows off that portrayed positive black images. Did they not? You all over the place, brother. You all you talking about having a militia. Then you all over this thing about uh, we not respect it, even though we are. We we out here every all through the sun all through the summer. What do you do? Let me ask you a question. What is your, what do you do? What are you doing? You trying to get back in the way of things of being a civilian. Is your movement being respected? 
Okay, so how are you going to come up here and literally tell us that we're not respected by someone that hasn't even started yet? We up and running already. You still are taking baby steps, brother. We're running on the words of this most high God and being obedient and having brotherhood and unity. You're still starting up. Read what you got. It ain't about what you want, it ain't about what we want, it's about what the most high wants. Read what you got. That's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 39. Come on. See now that I, even I, am he. The most high says I and even I am he. Read. And there is no God with me. There is no God but the most high God, Yahweh. The devil don't do nothing wicked. The most high gives all that stuff uh, to the most high. Read. I kill and I make alive. Uh-huh. I wound. And I heal. I wound and I heal. He said, I kill and I make alive. The most high kills and makes alive. The most high wounds and heals, right? So when you ask that question, where do you tell a woman that had her baby killed? I told her to be obedient. Read. Really? Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hands. And there's none that can deliver out the most high hands. Right? Hold on, hold on. We're having a conversation. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, and good job for you. You'll do it again. Hey, matter of fact, kiss this right here. Why'd you kiss the boot then? Because you're weird. You're weird. That's weird as hell. That's weird as hell. Why would you do something that don't make sense? But that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We're talking to him. Don't be disrespectful to him. Read what you got. I mean, go with you, what you got, brother. I never heard that. A man kissed the boot because he wanted to try it. That's weird. Uh huh. Right. Give me that proverb and byword twenty eight. You just said it though. Repeat what you said. You said my people are looked at as as the bottom of the totem, right? Why? You you believe that we're good, strong, knowledgeable people? Again, right? How do we lose that first that first dominion? There you go, brother. You get it, but you try to fight us on this. What's your goal? Let me ask you that. What's your goal? Yeah. What's your goal? Are you trying to like start a protection type agency for our people? Which we commend, I want my right? I want my people to know somebody armed against the right now it's just like we're being killed by the masses. But are we being killed by our own people too? But that's not my that's not that's how do you how do you stop black on black violence? So you think the black man will stop killing other black men by killing other people? Where is that in history? Has that ever been established? That we can stop killing each other by killing other people that don't look like us? Well, that's what we teach them. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. Well, everything you're saying, we got the answers in this Bible. American soldiers? What do you mean soldiers? What do you mean though? Who who are these group of men? Okay. I don't see that though. Uh -huh. Who are these men, though, you're talking about? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. But these men, did they kill? Who did they kill? These men that are incarcerated. You know, some people are in jail. That's, that's fine, that's fine. 
But these men that are incarcerated, what, were they ever thinking about going out there and killing these other nations? No. They were killing each other, right? Yes. Okay, so you're trying to get them out of that mindset. You know, that's a, that's a Stockholm Syndrome that made them kill their own people. It's called Stockholm Syndrome. The Willie Lynch letters pitted the black men against each other. So even if you talked them out of it, if you didn't come back to this Bible, they would come out and kill their own people once again. You're not going to change their mind because they have a Willie Lynch letter syndrome in their body and in their mind. That's allowing them to kill each other freely and for fun. That's what we out here teaching. But we can't change it unless we go back to the law. Because I can't do it on my own. That's right. We have no structure as black people. What's our structure? Like we have structure. We're an independent group, right? Okay, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Okay, I agree with that. As a, as a group of people, yes, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. Right. Right. Give me uh, uh, give me uh, Zephaniah two and two and one. But you said something powerful. You said something powerful, and that I agree with, right? We're not gathered together. We don't have any unity, right? We can't unite unless we all come under one actual system. Now it it, it, it it has to, it has to, because again, if if you have different belief systems, he has different belief. There's there's never going to be unity. Look at history. But see, the thing is, is my friend, right? That's something that that was that was that was said. But do we follow that as a group of people? We make ourselves our own enemy. The clan, listen. The clan said we don't even got to kill the black men anymore. They kill each other. Our music kills each other. Our music has our women out here being whores and thoughts, right? Our our movies propagate us being actual animals right we, we go through all that so I can't sit here and allow somebody in this organization if they're not going to be obedient because they're going to be a cancer to our, our, our society the Bible tells us to purge out the rebels read what you got I'm, I'm gonna read this real quick read it read it brother read it it's a book of Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1 come on gather yourself together what the Lord say gather yourselves together read ye gather together O nation not desire. O nation not desire. Right? That's us. We got to gather ourselves together. Read on. Before the decree bring forth. Uh huh. Before the day pass as the shaft. Before the day pass the shaft. Read. Before the fierce anger of the mo Lord. Hold on. Hold on. Before you listen to that. Before the fierce anger of the Lord, the Most High told us to gather ourselves. The fierce anger of the Lord is that day that Yahweh shall come back and redeem his people. Uh -huh. Right? So we have to gather ourselves together. If someone wants to come into this organization, before you can be on this side, you got to put these fringes on. You got to grow your beard. You got to keep the law. We're not just going to let any old Joe blow in here because they might not be for us. History, hold on. History told us that. I'm not going to go at history and say that's not going to happen again. Right? History tells us how to actually live life in the future. We use history to understand our own what, what's going on, right? I don't know. 
I don't know about that. Oh, they got, do they have fringes on? Okay. Okay. They don't get along with, with each other in their own organization? You mean other camps? Other camps. So we understand that. We understand. That's why we brought out Isaiah 52 and 8. That's true. That's true. No, we believe the same things, but we don't we don't camp together. There's guys up here that want that come by, and we shalom them, brothers, and they shalom us back, right? So we don't we're not we're not we're not saying you got to teach on one block together all the time because we all got fringes on, right? You know, Paul and Silas didn't agree on everything, and they went separate ways, and they 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 taught what they both believe in. They just had a difference on on who's going to take what. That don't mean that we're against each other. We still we work together by doing the work of the Most High. That's how we work together. We're one body with different members. Does that make sense? Paul and Silas, they had a disagreement, and they split. They they, they split up, right? What about the verse? We just read it. Zephaniah two and one. The book of Zephaniah chapter two verse one. Uh huh. Gather yourselves together. Uh huh. Yea, gather together, O nation not desire. Come on. Before the decree bring forth, uh -huh. before the day pass as the shaft, uh -huh. before the fierce anger of the Most High come upon you. The Most High's high told us to gather ourselves together. In Silas, that's in the book of Acts. All right, go to Acts. Uh, let me see. Acts. Uh, give me the book of Acts. We're not saying we can't get along. We get along with all these, but we get along with uh, uh, two th so called two thirds. Brothers like you, we're getting along, are we not?